a vessel of honor. And I can say a sanctuary of honor. The kind subtopic, the kind of person that God uses. Not my word, but God's word coming from 2 Timothy, 2nd chapter, 20 through the 22nd verse is our focus for this evening. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn there, but there will be other scriptures that Elder Campbell will be um, reading for for us tonight. And I thank you, Elder Campbell, for um, here being here with me. I thank God for you. The overview and summary of this lesson, first, the declaration that I had all during this week was that, Lord, I'm going to live my life regardless of whomever, speaking personal, so God, you can use me any time. Any place and anywhere, I want to be that vessel. Help me, Lord, to grow even into being a more perfect vessel slash sanctuary for you. And what kind of vessel do you require me to be so I can share it with others? So that brings me to our lesson. God has chosen to accomplish his task of redemption through the efforts of you and me. Christians have been appointed and chosen to affect change in this world. Just stop and think. Only think about self. What changes as a child of God, a living sanctuary, or a vessel of honor unto God? Am I effecting any kind of change in this world? Not uh, the great, the whole wide world, but world right where we are, in our own environment, in our own places where we are. But before God can uh, use us for this mission, we got to become usable. Our usefulness to God, the word says in 2 Timothy 2 and 19, says, let everyone who name the name of Christ depart from iniquity to be a vessel of God who brings honor to him. We are supposed to be vessels of honor, not vessels of dishonor. We're either a vessel that brings honor or we're a vessel that brings dishonor. Ask yourself, what kind of vessel am I? Paul teaches us what God expects of each of us in his instructions to Timothy, who was a very, he was a young minister that was sent from one place as a new minister, young minister in Ephesus. And we got to be diligent to present our lives, uh, to present ourselves approved to God. A worker, a vessel who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And we will look at 2 Timothy 2.15. There you can find that. Vessels of the Lord must separate. We got to take action. It's not going to come just by osmosis. But we as vessels of God, a vessel of honor, and that's what I'm claiming. I'm declaring that anyone who's under the sound of my voice will be that vessel, a vessel of honor for God, the kind of person that God can use in this day and this time. The epistle or the letter of Second Timothy was written by Paul. 
Paul as a letter to encourage Timothy, a young pastor in Ephesus, to remain faithful in ministry, even amid suffering. And anyone who's in ministry and is a vessel of God, I know that there is much suffering. And because the word is declaring and uh, uh, here to Timothy that even though, you know, to remain faithful in ministry, even amid suffering, oh, yes, it hurts. Some things that come at you just bite you and make you want to bend over and throw the towel in. I'm a witness. This letter Paul was written from a, a, a prison in Rome, this being the second letter that Paul wrote to Timothy. He was adamant about Timothy following and doing what God, uh, Paul wanted Timothy to get to the people to, to make sure that they understand about being approved or a disapproved worker of God. The kind of person God uses, he will, he will share, and the kind of person that God, the things that God does not accept to qualify one to be a vessel of honor. Vessels of the Lord must separate from evil. Paul reminds Timothy that everyone who names the name of the Lord is to abstain from wickedness. So at this juncture, I'm going to ask Elder to please read our focal scripture and read along with you if you have your Bibles, your electronics, or whatever. Second Timothy, second chapter, 20 and 22nd verse. That's all we can digest tonight on this topic. So, Elder, could you please read that in our hearing? Amen. And the Thank word of God reads. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he <laughs> will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lust, yes. but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Thank you, Elder. In a large house, there are things there in this illustration. This is an illustration that uh, Paul is using. He, and in this large house, there were things, his illustration entailed things that were made of gold and silver were, were very precious uh, uh, items in the house. But there are also things in that house that are made of wood and clay. Just think of our own home. There are precious things that are very valuable to us, and there are some things, things that are just cling, clang, bang, bang things. But the Lord here with this house that is used in this illustration, the Lord wants to use us, and he was telling the people uh, for special purposes. So make yourself clean from evil. Then you will be holy. And the master can use you. You will be ready for good work. The vessel, the person, the sanctuary that God uses. This scripture text reveals the kind of vessel that God is using. The simple message of our text is that God uses cleansed people, cleansed people who are defined by two characteristics. And God uses 
cleanse people first who flee sin and pursue godliness. Following the advice given by Paul to Timothy for use as believers today, fall into four areas, quality areas for all Christians who are one, who are fall in the category of a vessel of honor. The first one is righteousness. The second one is faith. The third one is love and peace with the Lord's true people. Those are the qualities or characteristics where they, they line up with godliness. And noteworthy is that Paul uses in this illustration that house. And the wood and the clay earthenware vessels are used only in the kitchen for menial functions. That's a vessel of dishonor. And they offer a broken toss aside and whatever. But the gold and silver vessels are kept clean, spotless, polished, and they are used for honorable purposes, such as dinner parties, elegant uh, affairs, that were given. The point to be made here is that no one that's in this large house, and we're going to call it the Church of God, should be a vessel of this honor. I'll say it again. The point to be made here is that no one in the Church of God should be a vessel of this honor. Simply put, God is not going to use a garbage pail life to serve the pure gold gospel, hallelujah, the hungry world. God is not going to do that because his words say so. So if we have a choice, am I going to be a golden vessel, a vessel of honor, or am I going to be just wood and stubble? Again, I say, Simply put, God is not going to use a garbage pail life to serve the pure goal of gospel to a hungry world. Neither is God going to use dirty lives to serve the good news of Christ to the world. Because we, if that's what we try to do, then we are like sounding brass and tinkling cymbals, and there's no honor and no truth. Our word is no and void. God wants us to be honorable and vessels of honor. God uses cleansed people, as was read in 2 Timothy 2 and 21. You, we, me, you, everybody under the sound of my voice, if you want to be a vessel of honor, you must choose. Choose ye this day who you will serve. You must choose the type of vessel. Will you be a vessel of honor or a vessel of dishonor? Even though both are used of God, however, a child of God should have no desire to be a vessel for dishonor. For if you try, you, the word of God says that you're a liar and the truth is not in you. I say God don't want no garbage pail to use a garbage pail life to serve pure gold. And we are supposed to be vessels of honor. God, um, Elder, could you get me Romans 9, 21 and 23, please? <laughs> Amen. Romans 9, 21 to 23. Yes, ma'am. Does not the potter have power over the clay from the same lump to make one vessel for honor and another for dishonor? What if God, wanting to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels yes. of wrath? prepared for destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, 
which yes. he had prepared beforehand for glory. Yes, yes. God has a sovereign right, because he is God, to do as he pleases with his creation, whether you're an honorable uh, vessel or a dishonorable vessel. He's the potter, and his creation is the clay. We are the clay. So what right do we have to challenge the potter? Mm. Paul's point in this scripture text is that we are, I am, you are responsible for your choices. He will not force it on you. It's a choice and a matter of the heart. And that is the seat of your soul where you have that spiritual connection with God. Our connection with God is spirit man, not in the flesh. Spirit connects with God. By faith, we're connected with God. We believe that he is our sovereign God. He is master and he is Lord. Paul says, most importantly, he says, ask yourself, will you be a filthy vessel that God uses for this honor? Or will you choose to be a clean vessel that God uses for honor? Cleansing yourself to become a vessel of honor is one's choice and responsibility. Paul is not saying here that we can uh, atone for our own sins ourselves. We must avail ourselves and open up to Jesus by faith and that God uh, provided the blood of Jesus as a means, hallelujah, of cleansing us from all our sins. Elder um, 1 John 7, verse 7 and verse 9. He is our atonement. And she's going to read that right now. But and we'll if see we God's walk, person. If we walk in the light, yeah, he is in the light, yeah. we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Yes. And the truth is not in us. Yes. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive yes. us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Simply put, we should live in the light where God is, not in the dark. For we live in the, in the, in, in, in the light. We have that fellowship with each other because we are connected and the, according to the blood sacrifice of Jesus, God's son, who washed away our sins and made us clean. But if we confess our sins, God will forgive us. We're not hopeless now. We can trust God to do this just by faith. He always do what is right by his creation. He will make us clean from all, not just some, all of the wrong things we have done. And that brings us to there is a space in time where we acknowledge what we have done and, re and it comes to and repent for it, ask God for forgiveness, and that he says in his word that he will cast it into a sea of forgetfulness. And if you can't believe that and move forward to strive to be that vessel, honorable vessel of God, remember the choice is yours. Paul also uh, cleansed people. Another thing are sanctified. God uses cleansed people who are sanctified, useful to the master and prepared for every good work. She read it in 2 Timothy 2 and 1. Cleansed people are sanctified, meaning sanctified means set apart unto God. For God our 
live for God I die. We sing the song, I'm sold out. My mind is made up. My my heart is fixed. And I'm not going to turn around because I'm sold out. So are we sold out tonight? Will you be that filthy vessel that God uses for dishonor? Or will you be a choice, clean vessel that God uses for honor? Cleanse people through the death of Christ. Well, I want that scripture. Believers have been sanctified once and for all. And Elder, I think I want Hebrews 10, 9 and 10. I think that's the one I want. Okay, Hebrews 10, 9 and 10. Yes, ma'am. Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first that he may establish the second. By that will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Once and for all. I love it. He says, I am the God. I come to do what, what, what you want. So God ends that first system of sacrifices and starts his new way. Jesus Christ did the things that God wanted him to do. Thank you, Lord. And because of that, we are made holy, hallelujah, through the sacrifice of Christ's body. Christ made that sacrifice one time, enough for all time, ordained by God. God orchestrated it and told his son what to do and what it was about, and he followed through. So who are we as professing Christians not wanting to accept what God has already done for once and for all? There's also what is called progressive sanctification, meaning that as we grow in Christ, we are progressively conformed into God's image. Just because I accept Christ today, I, I, I have not yet arrived, and we will not arrive in that matter. It, with the Lord, there is what is called that growing process. We must be growing in the process of being separate from all authoritative law stuff and moral evil where we are set apart as clean vessels for the Lord's use. And I won't... First Thessalonians 4 and 7, Elder, please. First Thessalonians 4, 3 through 7. Yes, ma'am. For this is the will of God, yes. your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, yes. not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God, mm. that no one that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this manner, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanliness, but in holiness. Yes, yes. The Lord will punish those who do those things that Elder just read about. So don't let the, 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 our desires of our human flesh take over and cause us to become like that garbage pail. The Lord, the Word of God said, will punish those who do that. We have already told you, he said, this, and he has warned us about it. We are striving to become that honorable vessel. God has chosen us to be holy. He does not want us to live in sin. So if the word of God says that he does not want us to live in sin, he is our creator so we are making choices if we continue in our sins. That's not what God created his holy vessels for, a vessel of honor. He created us to 
to live a holy life that is acceptable unto him. And in Romans it tell me that is my reasonable service, glory be to God. And not to be conformed, hallelujah, to this world, but be ye transformed, changed by the renewing of our minds. That's where the devil get us. He get in our minds and tell us, oh, it's all right. But if we want to be a vessel of honor, we need to consider get with God. Get to yourself, pray, and ask God to deliver us from those things that easily beset us to run this race that we will not obtain and we are not classified in God's eyesight as a vessel of honor. And God uses cleansed people that are sanctified, and you got to choose, and God uses Cleanse people who are useful to the master. And the term master uh, emphasizes Christ's absolute lordship. He is the only. There is none other. None other. Paul points here is that dirty vessels are not useful to the master. We can go through the motions. We can pretend or whatever, but who are we serving? Who are we professing that we are following after? Who? We got to make a choice. It's a choice that we make. And if we go to God in prayer, and he says the fervent prayer of righteous men availeth much. God reads and knows our hearts. He knows who we are. He knows the things. We can pretend. We can put on. We can do whatever. But God's eye, we know about an eagle eye, but God's eye is sharper and can see and know all because this is a spiritual eye that he sees the inner depths of our soul. And we think that God can see what we do. God don't know what we do. But he's an all-seeing God, and he's an all-knowing God. So we can't run, and we can't hide. We can pretend to each other, and we can fool ourselves. But if we want to be a vessel of honor, the kind of person that God uses, then we have to make choices. Go to God in secret prayer and take it all there. You don't have to keep repenting over the same thing, over the same thing, because it's eating and gnawing at you. The main thing is that you ask God, God, help me not to return to that thing no more. You promised me that you would cast it into a sea of forgetfulness and walk worthy of the calling by which God has called you. He wants to use us as vessels of honor. Cleanse people, Elder, Second Timothy um, 3, 16, and 17. Before I go. Yes, ma'am. Second Timothy three sixteen and seventeen. Yes, ma'am. All scripture is given by inspiration of God mm-hmm. and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Thank you. Here, using the scriptures, those who serve God are going to be prepared for every good work work that God has. This is the idea of being willing and ready. There's two words I use, willing and ready. We can have the will to want to do all we want to do, 
But if our hearts and our minds and the seed of our soul is not cleansed, we are not useful to the master. We are only deceiving ourselves. And the cleansed vessel is waiting for the master to put it down off the shelf and is put to honorable use. Dirty vessels are not ready to be used. When you are cleansed, you are ready to serve the Lord in any good work that he sets before you. And it's not going to be you doing the work, but it's by the help of the Holy Spirit who will give you what the Lord wants you to have. And God is not going to give it all to you at one time, for we may lose our mind. We have to go step by step, each step, and consulting and asking God, confirm it for me, Lord. Is this what you want me to do? Is this where you want me to go? Is this what you want me to say? Is this how or whatever? It has to always and focus to be a vessel of honor. We got to look to the hills from whence cometh our help. And all of our help cometh from the Lord who made the heaven and earth. He's the only one who knows where he wants any vessel of honor, whether it's that dirty vessel. He knows everything. He knows it all. I don't know why it's difficult to understand that God is the creator of even the tree. And there was this conversation about where did the COVID come from? Nobody can tell where the COVID came from. But I do know a man that knows where it came from, and he knows where it's going. He knows. And I said, you see the tree? I said, these trees were created by God. I said, did you want to plant that seed? There are things that God does not allow men to know because they will think that they're God themselves. We have got to understand that God is the creator of all things. And uh, the uh, cleansed people who flee from sin and pursue godliness, as in 2 Timothy. Here are two commands that are in that verse. First of all, flee and pursue. Look at that. Flee run away. Pursue, run after. These are totally opposite. What we may sum up as godliness is broken down under four qualities, righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart and have peace with other believers. The world's lust used here by Paul in this scripture, refers to any desires, not necessarily any kind of sexual desires, but we have, we lust after things, and they are called is any kind of desire, although it refers, usually referred to uh, sinful desires. Specifically, the Bible commands us to flee from sin. Elder, I need uh, 1 Corinthians 6.18, and 10 and 13. 1 um, Corinthians uh, says about fleeing immorality. And 1 Corinthians 10 and 3 and 4 says flee from idolatry. So right there we have two things, immorality and idolatry. Cleanse people, in other words, those things are sin. Cleanse people, flee from sin. Elvis, you have them for me, please? Amen. First yes. Corinthians chapter six, eighteen through twenty. Yes, ma'am. Flee, flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Yes. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? And you are not your own, for you were bought at a price. Yes. Therefore, glorify God in your body 
and in your spirit, which are God. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 and 14. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Thank you. So here in one, the sins, uh, God has paid a very high price to make us his. He gave his only begotten son. So the least that we can do is honor God with our body and come out of the immorality stuff. And in the second one, in, in, in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, and 14, the word of God is, is letting uh, us know that there is nothing, there is no temptation that come up to us that uh, we have that, God, we got to trust God that he will not let us be tempted above that which we can bear ourselves, meaning we can make a choice. We can either go for or we can retreat. But when you are tempted, God says, he gives us an outlet here. God will give you a way to escape that temptation regardless of what it is. Then you will be able to endure it. So stay away from immorality. Flee from uh, worshiping idols. Cleanse people, fleeing and pursuing, as I say, the opposite. Cleanse people, pursue righteousness, which refers to right behavior that conforms to the standards of God's word. God's word gives us the commandments of God which are for our God and um, commands us to pursue righteousness. Our objective and our goal is to become and ever more increase to be a vessel of honor and detach ourselves from being a dishonored vessel, vessel, wood, stub, and whatever it is. We want to be used. We want to be the kind of person in this day and time, as we move forward and as we grow, we want to be vessels that are used by God for his glory. And people will see, and God will ensure that there be, will be examples where people will see that, yes, that is a vessel of honor. He will, it will be shown, and because we can see the holiness, the glow, the righteousness, always wanting to do right. Oh, when we are not pursuing the holiness of God, we always got some kind of issue. And we got to stop it in the name of Jesus. God is getting tired of mess. Just like people, you get tired of the same humdrum thing. If you have issues, and burdens. The scripture says, take your burdens to the Lord. And the second thing he says, and leave them there. Why I go to God with issues, problems, and situations, if as soon as you get up or an hour later, I'm right back with the same thing hounding me. It calls for faith. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. You're hoping to shake it off and pack it under your feet. Faith is a, faith is a substance of things hoped for and you, the evidence of things not seen, meaning that it hasn't manifested in your life as yet. But I believe God because I'm striving to be that vessel, that audible vessel that you want me to be, Lord, so I can... Mm, so I can be useful for your service, Lord, and for your glory. And I give you honor, and I praise you with the things that I do that you direct and guide me to do, Lord, in the name 
pursue the righteousness, obedience to God's word, there's one right there, Elder, uh, if that's critical. Psalms uh, 40 and 8, and it's Hebrew 10, 7, 40. Psalms 40 and 8, before I go to that obedience. Psalm 40 and 8. Yes, ma'am. I delight to do your will, yes. oh my God, and your law is within my heart. And Hebrews yes, 10, 7. Then I said, Behold, I have come in mm. the volume of the book. Yes. It is written of me to do your will, O oh God. Mm. Glory to God. Obedience to God's word is commanded. As in that Psalm 40, Simply put for me is, God, I am happy to do whatever you want me to do. And I never stop thinking, Lord, about what you teach me according to your word. And in that Hebrew 10 and 7, then uh, um, that one is, here I'm, I, I'm surrendering. Here I am, God. It is written. About you, me, in the book of the law. I, Jesus, have come to do what you want me to do. And if you're growing to be like Jesus, then we are growing in the delight of pursuing righteousness from the heart. Hebrew 10 and 7. Um, cleanse people pursue faith. We should be pursuing faithfulness. It indicates that you are trustworthy, not to man, but to God. You are trustworthy and dependable. So God will open up and open ways that you will be useful for his service, knowing that you are trustworthy and reliable, that you will not take unto yourself the things that God allows you to be a vessel to do on behalf of him. You will not take that glory to yourself. He knows who is reliable, trustworthy, and dependable. And when you are given an assignment, you can be surely counted on to get it done. Because we trust God. We pray to God. We allow the Holy Spirit to give us guidance and direction. Everything that we go about doing is not to our advantage. But Sometimes we get caught up and want to go ahead of what God say do. But he said, be still and know that I am God. And surely that's when, uh, uh, by, by faith, we can pursue. Cleanse people, pursue love. Paul commands that we are to pursue love. And pursuing love requires getting our focus off of ourselves and onto others so that we can treat them as we wanted to want to be treated. So we gotta get out of this thing of woe is me. It ain't about us. But it's about doing the will of a father who sent us. Cleanse vessel, pursue peace with all who call on the name of the Lord with a pure heart. The world's way of pursuing peace and dealing with misunderstandings or conflict is totally different than the way that a believer, a true vessel of God, is commanded to make peace. God's way is to go directly to the one who you've offended and seek to be reconciled. It is difficult. But Paul said in Romans 12 and 18, and, and I, I, I want Matthew 5 and 23, that's my scripture elder, that's it, that a cleansed vessel is to pursue peace and be at peace with all men, not just some, all. Thus, vessels used by God, that's how he can use us. 
Good Lord, help us. Help me to be an instrument of peace. Elder, can I get Matthew 5, uh, 23 and 24? That's my the last one, I think. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Matthew yes. 5, 23 and 24. Yes. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there remember that mm. your brother has something against you. Yes. Leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. Mm. First, be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Thank you. I wanted that to coincide with the, uh, the difference in the, world, the way the world uh, pursue peace and how as children of God, who are vessels that are used to be used, the kind of vessel that God used, and how we are to process. You know, the question may be, well, supposing they don't want to hear me or whatever. Well, then you have done what God has commanded you to do. Brush, shake the dust, go on, pray to God, and do what God, by his spirit, tells you to do. Thus, vessels used by God, when God is in it, it will, the, uh, the vessel used by God will pursue peace. And in conclusion, it's a great honor to be used as a vessel of honor. A person born again and thus have decided to follow Christ to be used by God. You do not have to have great talent, a great seminary student, or have read the Bible from cover to cover, vast knowledge of the Bible, nor any special talent or gift to be on the team wherein we're running so we can keep this vessel of honor, to be on that team. You must have faith, though, and you must have a spirit to obey what the Word of God says and to choose to do the will of God that is pleasing to him to be on the starting lineup for any big game on the battlefield for the Lord. Just put faith and trust in God and be that believer of God who has faith and constantly, never stopping, flees from sin and pursue godliness. And then we are in our arena of asking God to prepare us to be a living sanctuary. And then we're going to say, I'm living, God. I'm striving to live so you can use me anytime, any place, and anywhere. Every Christian is to be a link in the chain that gets the gospel to the next generation. We are held responsible to do that. We, as people of God, are responsible and is a link in the chain that gets the gospel to the next generation. That is our responsibility as being a vessel of honor, the kind of person that God uses that came from Second Timothy, that Paul's last letter before he was executed, he wanted Timothy to be that kind of vessel. So he, the word is to us. We tag on and we move forth by faith, trusting and believing that God will do the same in our lives. God bless you. I pray that we declare that we're going to live, that God can use us anytime, any place, and anywhere, and that we are that. We are in the process continuously of preparing, preparing to be a living sanctuary, usable, that vessel, honorable vessel by God.